السلام عليكم اسواغتام نما بنغالرو زندگی محبت ہے دس از ویئر مائی ہندی اسٹاپس آئی تھنک اٹس انف آ می ہیو فیو آئیڈیاز دے می سیم ان اسٹرکچرڈ بٹ آئی ہیو ون ریکویسٹ تھنک انٹل دی اینڈ ٹو فائنڈ دا لنک دی آئیڈیاز ایم گوئنگ ٹو شیئر ٹوڈے آئی کائنڈ آف کون دم ان ٹو سم تھنگ دیٹ آئی کول دا براؤن مینس برڈن سو اٹس ناٹ اباؤٹ براؤن ایز اے کالر So please don't feel offended if you are brown or not brown, white or not white. It's beyond regular colors. So the ideas that today I'm going to talk about are actually kind of around four main elements. Colonialism, development, religion, and entrepreneurship. An obvious link may not be very obvious, but it's all about challenging. Challenging what? Borders. And we'll see what do we mean by borders. So, very important, a disclaimer. I am not an economist, nor a theologian, nor a scientist, nor an engineer, nor anything else that you may think about. I just think, which happens to me quite often, and I hope that many people also share this, And I hope that nobody would feel offended by some of the ideas that I might be sharing. As a kind of a custom, people start with stories. I'll start with two. The first one that happened to me was like five years ago when I was living in Europe, in France. I was working for a big multinational company. A colleague of mine came to me and she said in a very nice way, do you know why you are so underdeveloped? I was like, why? <laughs> She said, because of your religion. I was like, uh-huh. And then she said, she was very nice. It was not a judgmental thing. It was just, she was just sharing her opinions. And she was like, if you look at the map, all the countries below the Mediterranean Sea have same kinds of issues. You have gender issues, you have illiteracy, you have poverty, you have uh, democratic issues, blah, 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 you can, you can name all of them. And then she said, I started to look on the internet, and I found there was one common thing. They're all Muslims. I was like, okay. I was still trying to process what it actually meant. And then it took me into a path to kind of try to go on a hide-and-seek mission to try and understand where she came from and what this kind of statement might mean for somebody who does not share the same background, the same ideas. So I then went, I come from Morocco. I'll go back to the idea of come from afterwards, which is a country in North Africa. And unfortunately, if it's a very difficult, beautiful country, many people think so, it's also a country with a lot of challenges. One of the biggest challenges that we have is illiteracy. We have one of the highest rates of illiteracy in the region, North Africa and Middle East, and in the world. This might seem quite weird. So I was like thinking, well, based on my understanding, if you are Muslim, the last thing that you can have to do is read the Quran. So how come you are not able to read and write and be a Muslim? And I believe you continue from your own end. And then I came to realize that actually people were being told to what was it, what was that, based on any kind of background or orientation. And then I came to think about more about this, and it's like, huh, so what is one reason that can keep people from educating others. As you might know, if you have access to education, you start to read, you start to think, then you start to question. You question what? Political authority. And we all know, when it's all about power, politics, and money, deals are very easily made. It actually gets to the point that sometimes there is an overlap between what communities live in, what they think, what they think the others think about them, and what they think about themselves, 
and at the same time, what they assume is the reality. It may sound a bit complicated. This leads to a very important question. Who are you? Or another one that sometimes some people ask, where are you from? Two very simple questions that underlines very complicated elements. Let's take the first one. Who are you? Who ever asked this question to himself? Raise your hands. The easiest answer to this question is, I am da da da. Unfortunately, many people want to keep it simple, just like you use one word, just like you have a hashtag, something very simple. I am X. And then I'll leave you understand or kind of assume what does this X mean. But it's actually much more complicated. The question of identity, sometimes people kind of understand it by the origin. Where are you from? And here, origin, I'm going to challenge the concept of origin. It's not because you are born somewhere that makes you from that place. Especially that now in the 21st century, we can choose origins. And then we can have like a little geography thing. When I came to Bangalore two days ago, I was asking a couple of fellow Indians two questions. What do you know about this part of the world? Morocco, Maghreb, North Africa. Second question, what would you like to know? I'll summarize the, and more, many of them are here. I'll summarize the answers. First of all, I had food. It was interesting because most of the people that I've asked have never seen that food, nor tasted it. So the, how would you know that I know food and I've, I've never tried it? It's a kind of a complicated thing. Second thing, they would say, it's a beautiful country. And they say, okay, how do you know it's beautiful if you've never been there? Yeah, I saw some documentary and then... And then third thing was like terrorism, instability and whatever. And then I was like, okay, so obviously you don't know geography. <laughs> then what does it mean? That in Arabic, Morocco means Maghrib which is the extreme west. Up until a point in history, in the old world, we were the west. <laughs> I leave you keep on understanding what it means. <laughs> so, the people who were like, oh, all these instability, the worst, all that's happening in whatever countries, means that you live in a kind of a conflictual situation. I was like, hmm, this is true, but maybe you're referring to the Middle East. And then the question that you need to ask, who's middle and who's east? <laughs> I leave you again to understand what it means. So, origin is not a straightforward question. It's not like, I am from this. Second part is religion. It's easy, you are ex-religion, and then you understand what it means, and you kind of assume you do this, you don't do that, etc., and then you leave it to the others to kind of make up their minds. Another point interesting is gender. I met a lady a few years ago. When I asked her this question, who are you? She started by saying, I'm a woman, African, Arab, with a Muslim background. Order in this type of questions is very interesting because it makes you understand where the people kind of associate themselves. So gender is a very important element to understand relations. Another point is ethnicity. You are whatever from this kind of ethnicity, this tribe that somehow kind of settled down in an area, but sometimes being born in ethnicity does not make you part of this global tribe. Now, in the 21st century, we call it the crowd. People choose their crowds, not always, not always their tribe. The other one that comes again with identity is affiliation. Whether it's political 
or a movement. For example, I, I consider myself an anarchist. But some people would say I'm a leftist, I'm a democrat, I'm a that party, the other ones. Last point in this idea of identity, I put football. I don't like football. Actually, I hate it. I'm against it for various reasons. So many people now associate themselves with the kind of football here in India, I can put the cricket team or any other sports, it's the same thing, usually. So a lot of people now are associating themselves. Um, for, for those who like football and watch the Spanish football, I'm a Madridista, or Marialista, or whatever. And then what's even more interesting, like when there is a match, and then like the Real Madrid wins, and they say, we won. <laughs> I don't understand it very much. So this is the whole idea of getting the point of identity. We don't have one identity. It might seem very obvious, but not everybody understands it. Multiple layers that can change over time. It's not something that is up, halas, set in stone. So identity was, to some extent, a result of what some people call colonialism or imperialism. When you are living in countries, and it's also very important to know that our modern-day countries are all, sorry for this, inventions. Because the borders that we live in have been drawn a day in a time by somebody. Whether it's based on an ethnic group, a religious group, or a geography, and it, that's it. And then what's more, what makes it more interesting is that it creates something called like a a nationalist identity. I am this versus that. We are, whether we are in the subcontinent or in the other world or whatever. So whenever you have the I am, it means I am an opposite to something. And I'm not a big fan of nationalism because nationalism is also a cause that creates conflicts, a bit like football. When you say that, I'm in a, a football game against. It's like we're in a war. People don't understand it this way. But like we say, we are uh, playing against, and we won times 10, times 2, whatever. It's like my tribe won something. So the whole business of nationalism was kind of created to counter the idea of a colonial power, which a colonial power is based on the business of divide and rule. And sometimes the colonial power has left something that is called the white man's complex. Again, I'm not talking about white in a strict term. So that, just be aware of this. So the whole business of white man's complex is that I created a sense of inferiority. I have been colonized by whatever country. I do my, now my business with that country, and I wait for somebody from that country to come and teach me and tell me what to do. It's like a don't have the skills, nor the capacity to do it. Now, we have what we call neocolonialism, which is more about business. We have big multinational companies. It's not about countries itself. So the whole business of neocolonialism is somehow very dangerous, because we can't see it. It's not as obvious. This neocolonialism makes it even complicated when we talk about, let's say, former colonies, whether we are in India or in Africa or whatever. The general image that people have of Africa, that it's a poor continent. Many people live under the rate of poverty. And then we need aid. We need money, we need uh, resources to bring people out of this. So now it's kind of important, especially here in India, to talk about the whole idea of development and wealth. What is wealth? There is nothing such as a poor country. We have poor minds, not poor countries because it's the brain that creates the wealth, not the opposite. And it gets more complicated when we say, oh, people want jobs. And I'll leave you with a, a number, four million. Guess, what is that four million about? What can it be? It's an Indian number, by the way. Four million graduates every year leave university in India. Do you know what it means? What does it mean for a million people every year leaving university? 
What does it mean? Unemployment. Unemployment? What else? What can it mean? Jobs. The people demand jobs. It means four million people, they need to work. The question that I usually ask in, when I meet people is like, so after graduation, what would you do? Obvious question would be, obvious answer would be looking for a job. Imagine four million people all looking for a job. What would happen? And this is just for a year. I'm not even counting what's happening before and after. So when you have a whole generation looking for something, and in the case of Morocco, in many countries in the region, it's actually waiting for somebody to get you a job, not looking for a job for yourself. And it's also very different. So that, and I'll kind of end up here, the world today need a job revolution. A job revolution is based on an independence. Independence of what? Independence of thinking, independence of initiative. Independence of thinking and initiative is what some people in the startup scene call it entrepreneurship. And again, entrepreneurship, I'm not talking about creating a business itself per se, but more of having an entrepreneurial spirit, which most of the people have here at least. Is not waiting for something to be done on your behalf, but do it first by yourself. The slogan that I wish to have that everyone underscore entrepreneur, which means that everyone creates impact for himself, for herself, and the community. Otherwise, you cannot grow. And when you cannot grow, it means you cannot develop. Last quote, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change the way you think about it. And you will live happily ever after. Don't complain. Fix. And it's the business of fixing that creates a mindset revolution. And this is what we need for the world today. And thank you.